Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. My name is Andy with Boltworks Today, and this week we're going to check to see if we can use a cheap $27 airbrush to get professional quality repairs using this Alexial paint. Now, before we get started, I want to take a moment and talk about our this week's sponsor, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online service that I started using a couple of months ago. And initially, it's to try and learn more about editing, storytelling, and, and that kind of thing. But the more time I spent looking around some of the other 25,000 other classes that they offer, I found some really, really excellent courses on like time management and ways to increase productivity. And you know, these are things that most people struggle with, and you know, myself included. So to try and help myself to get better with this, Skillshare is where I'm going to be going to do this. To kick this promotion off, Skillshare is giving away two months of unlimited access and then after that, premium memberships are just $10 a month. So click the link down below in the description to start your free trial and learn something new this summer from the convenience of your own home. I mean, it, just, it doesn't get any easier than that. So with that said, I want to say thank you to Skillshare and let's get into the video. So now up to this point, the prep for this repair has been pretty much identical to what it was last week when we were doing the repair, brushing it on or, you know, not spraying. So just as a quick recap, after the, the scratch itself was filled in using the Total Fair, you know, made by Total Boat, it was wiped down with a, a cleaner de-waxer and then sanded with 400 grit. Now, one thing you did notice is, and I can't find it right at the moment, but last week, because I was using a roller, I was able to basically use my sanding block, which is a, you know, gonna give me a wider area for sanding. Now for this, because I'm gonna be spraying it, I wanna try and keep that, the sanded area, or this area that's got scuffed, uh, as small as possible, you know, but I wanted it to be flat. So that's why I used uh, basically a, <laughs> a mixing stick, kind of put a, put a foot on it, and then wrapped it with 400 grit, and then wet sanded that flat. So now at this point, we're pretty much ready to start mixing up and spraying. Now for the primer, I'm gonna be using, it's the same primer, it's the 442 pr Finishing Primer by Alexio. Uh, but the difference is, is I'm gonna be using a different reducer. So the reducer for this is going to be the, is this it? No, that's the catalyst. It's this stuff. <laughs> So I'm going to mix this up, uh, let's see, well the, the, the catalyst, or the, the converter and the base get mixed at, mixed at a one to one ratio, and then you can reduce it up to 25%. Okay, so I have two ounces basically total so far, and I'm, because I'm going to be going through an airbrush that has such a fine tip, I want to say it's like a 0.3 millimeter tip on it, um, I'm going to reduce this to full 25% just so that I can actually go through the, go through the little airbrush here. So 25% on this, I believe, is going to be about half an ounce. Well, this kind of sucks. After 15 years, I think my airbrush finally broke. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not working. I've, I've had it, I've taken it apart here, and I've been kind of playing with it for the last half an hour. Um, but it, it's not. When you uh, when you push the button down, it, it's a two-action deal here. So you you push the button down, that turns on the air. And then the farther you pull this 
little button back, it controls how much paint is actually coming out. Well, this, it's not even turning on the air, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense because if I, I mean, air comes through, but for some reason, and, that's, and the pin is still there, this little, this little dangly part right here, Ooh, right, right here. That's actually what, well, and that's what's supposed to go down and, and push the little poppet to let the air flow through. Well, for some reason it's not reaching or it's just, it's not working, which makes absolutely no sense. So, I think I'm going to have to go to, yeah, it's just nothing. Okay. So I'm going to have to go to plan B. Uh, it is Tuesday, like 5 o'clock when I'm recording this. So I'm going to jump on Amazon. I, I said before that uh, you, can, you can easily do these kind of repairs with a cheap-ass little airbrush, a little $20, $30 airbrush. Well, I'm going to test that. <laughs> so it is a few days later. Actu actually, it's quite a few days later. The, uh, the 4th of July or the Independence Day weekend kind of jacked up the, the shipping schedule for Amazon, but... That's all right. It made it. Now, what I ended up ordering was one of the cheapest um, airbrushes that I could find on Amazon. I think it was like either twenty or twenty-two dollars, something like that. So, never used it. The, uh, the my old airbrush that died on me was an Iwata I W A T A, and that was that was kind of a pricey, uh, pricey little airbrush. I want to say it was like around one hundred and fifty bucks, maybe two hundred, but. It lasted almost 15 years, so that's, I, you know, I guess it was money well spent, because I've used that thing a lot. <laughs> so, so I'm going to be really, really interested to see how this one, a cheap version, compares to the, uh, my old one. Now, one of the things that I thought was kind of unique, holy plastic people. Now, one of the things I thought was kind of unique with this uh, particular airbrush is that uh, it, it comes with three different needles, a point three. A 0.4 and a 0.5, I believe, uh, millimeter. And I believe my old airbrush was just strictly a 0.3. I'm not 100% positive on that, uh, but that's what I seem to remember. And here are the different needles. Now, the reviews on this were a little bit mixed. Uh, some people, t I don't know, maybe it's just like a lot of things. You either have good luck with the purchase or you have bad luck with the purchase. So uh, we shall see here. But right off the bat, first thing I am going to do is swap the, uh, the needle that's out in here for the 0.5. I want to get a, a little bit larger needle so that we have a little bit better uh, actual flow of the, uh, of the primer and the paint. Now, since this is a brand new brush, I know that they're, when, when they shipped this, when I, told the old, when I took the old needle out, I could see that the very tip on here had some oil kind of uh, pack in there. Because it's brand new, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a little bit of the reducer for the primer. So I'm going to go ahead and finish flushing this out. And, and I'm going to get the, the, the primer already mixed up. You saw me do that once uh, before uh, on the failed attempt when the airbrush did not work. So there's really no point in, in seeing how, uh, how that's mixed up again. It's going to be done the exact same way. So I'm just going to uh, run some solvent through here a couple times, mix up some primer, and I'll see you in a few minutes. So, all right, so basically I just sprayed on what would be the equivalent of essentially one coat. Now, given the temps that I'm in in the shop here, it's about 75 degrees, I'll be able to come back and recoat this again in probably an hour, maybe two hours. Uh, no sanding, as long as I'm within the, the recoat window, uh, which I believe is up to 12 hours, I think. I'll have to check the spec sheet. Um, but I know the minimum time is definitely one to two hours in this kind of temperature. The warmer you get, the shorter the, the, the time you have to wait before you can recoat. The colder, well, the longer you're going to have to wait. So I'm going to walk away from this for about an hour and uh, come back and check it. I'll, I'll just kind of gently tap around kind of where the overspray is uh, along, where I, along where I shot. And if it, uh, if it doesn't feel tacky, then I'm going to mix up another batch 
Well, now I'm not gonna mix up another batch. I'm just gonna load up the airbrush again and then respray a second coat. And after two coats, that should be good. I wanna basically get it to the point where I can barely, if any, uh, see the old repair line from the, uh, from the old total fare, uh, where we filled that scratch. So, um, so now we wait. <laughs> So good morning, it is the following day. Our primer has set up and we're basically ready to start sanding. Now, that brings up to the question as far as, well, what grit sandpaper should I be starting with? Now, because this was sprayed, there's, you know, there's a thing that's called overspray, which is basically the, the area that you are directly trying to cover with primer or paint. There's always a little bit of a border around there, say like an inch or two inches all the way around, that gets what's called overspray or basically dry spray. And if you take it, Right on here, you can see, you know, just by rubbing your finger on there, you know, it's just basically a, a dry powder that's kind of stuck to the surface. So, as part of our sanding, we need to remove all that overspray, and we also want to knock down the primer that is directly over top of the repair. Now, the grit that I'm going to want to start with, I'm going to want to start with something that's going to be really, really close to, you know, pretty much being able to go straight to buffing afterwards, because I'm going to be hitting this with a sanding block which means the area that's going to be sanded is going to be much larger than what we did initially just to go over that, that scratch. So I'm going to start with 1500 grit and then initially just to knock down the primer, get rid of all the overspray and then when it's all said and done then I'll come in with some 800 and just kind of directly go right over top of where the scratch was. Now the reason I'm going with 800 is because we're doing our touch up with, the, with an airbrush. An airbrush puts out the material in such fine particles. You don't get the kind of the same kind of build as you do as if you were using like a regular um, you know uh, conventional spray gun. So that's the reason for wanting to use a much finer grit being 800 grit. So let me get some 1500 grit wrapped up on the sanding block and let's get this knocked down. So I've already gone ahead and mixed up the paint. Now Alexio, when you're spraying it, it gets mixed at a one to one ratio, meaning that so one part of the base or the paint to one part of the converter. Now, because we're spraying this, we're not using the brush converter. You know, they, there is an actual spray converter uh, that you use. So it's one to one to the spray converter. And then I'm act I actually reduced this uh, a little bit more than what they you know, have spec out on their sheets. They say you can go up to 37% reduction. Uh, I'm going, I'm taking it up to 40%, which isn't that much more, uh, but it's a, a little, it's going to make it a little bit thinner, a little bit easier to run through this airbrush just because the nozzle and the tip is just so small. So uh, overall, I'd say, I, well, I did basically one ounce of the paint, one ounce of the spray converter, and then a little less than one ounce of the actual reducer, actually about 80% of one ounce, something like that. So. Before I go ahead and dump this off into the airbrush, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through a strainer into a clean cup. I don't think there's any little bits in here, but just in case, I'd rather have it caught in the filter than get clogged up in the airbrush and well, kind of hold up the show. So give this a nice little last stir and then we're going to dump it off. And just to give you, a, I guess, a bit of an idea as far as what the consistency is, uh, it's pretty thin, you know, so it'll go from a straight stream just to a few drops and then done. And that looks, that looks pretty good to me. And here again, I have not changed the air pressure settings, so I should be, I should still be at about 20 pounds. And I'm just going to do a quick little test shot here. And then I'll put my mask on and actually do the panel, but... Yeah, that's spraying out real nice. All right, perfect. Let me throw on my mask. 
and hope everything goes well. <laughs>so it has been a little over an hour and I think we're I think we're ready to go for the for the second coat so right now the area that I have sprayed here it's about the size of like a hot dog uh, give or take so now when I'm doing the second coat I'm actually I'm gonna extend it out a little bit wider and a little bit longer not much maybe by another quarter inch maybe half inch give or take now the entire area that's sanded in here I don't need to uh, I guess coat that entire area that's been sanded because that's only been sanded with 1500 so it, all I want to do is just make sure I have a, a, a thick enough film right over the, the damaged area so that I can wet sand without you know, sanding through. And then the area around here that's sanded with 1500, I can go back over that with 2000 and then buff it all out and everything should you know, blend all in, in theory. So let me, uh, let me pour up some more paint and uh, get this second coat down. Now because this has been sitting in the cup for about well, like I said, a little over an hour. Uh, I am going to give a, another little splash of additional reducer just to kind of reconstitute it. So I'm um, going to take care of that real quick and then get number two down. Okay, so now we went from a, uh, from a hot dog to a burrito size area. <laughs> um, I think this camera is able to pick up this, uh, the actual full size of this now, but um, I may actually have enough, materi enough material on there right now just to leave it, but I think, even though I said I was going to do four, I think I'm just going to do three. So I'm going to do one more coat after this, and again, about another 45 minutes or an hour. And, uh, and I'll call it, call it a night. So fast forward roughly 18 hours and our paint has set up, it's, it's not fully cured, but I think it's set up enough to the point where we can start working with it. Now, as opposed to when we did a, this type of repair, but with rolling the paint on, uh, because we sprayed this, when we're sanding this out, there's actually very, very little tapering that needs to be done. Basically, all we're looking to do is just block it flat, polish it out, and we should be done. Now, because this paint is still so tender, and remembering a lesson that I learned from the, uh, from the past repair. Uh, I'm going to start the sanding with this with 1500 grit. And I'm going to use that to basically block out the, the area that we sprayed. Again, just to kind of level it out. And then from there, I'm going to go switch over to hand sanding. And I'm going to go up to 2000. I don't know that I have any other grits uh, that are more fine than 2000. I'll have, to, I'll have to take a look around. But if I do, I'm going to use them because it just makes the polishing go that much faster. So, a little soapy water. Let's get this thing knocked down. So let me bring it in closer here so you can get a, I guess, a better angle as to how the sanding has turned out here. Now, let's see, catch glare. Okay, right there, wherever it's glossy, has not been sanded. And our repair area is right in through here somewhere. I can't quite tell. But the, uh, the sanding, you don't see any kind of a silver halo or lining around uh, the area that we sprayed. Everything sanded right down perfectly flush and flat. And it looks, it just, it looks fantastic. Now for compounding this out, I'm going to try something that I have not actually shown yet. Uh, if you recall, in the, in the last video where I did the, the, this repair using the, the brushing or the rolling on the, of the paint instead of the spring, uh, when it came to the compounding, I ended up having to go over with two different types of compounds. The first one was the, the Festool, the Speed Cut, and then follow it up with that with the 3M perfect it with the white cap in the number one right here. And it worked. It worked, but I mean, it was, it was a little bit of a struggle. Um, and I, I couldn't quite figure out why. So 
I've d I did a little bit of playing around with different compounds, and basically what I found is that the longer that this, the, the more cured that this paint is. Now the patch that we just did, that's very tender, but everything around that is pretty well cured at this point. It's that this paint on the, on the overall panel was laid up, what, two weeks ago or, or two to three weeks ago? So it's pretty well cured. It's, I would say it's gotten most of the hardness uh, you know, that it's going to get uh, over that period of time. And what I found is that when I was buffing out the repair, you know, the tender paint, the, uh, the 3M Perfected, that worked fantastic because the paint is still very soft. And then as I had to feather into the, the surrounding area, which at that point was about two weeks cured, uh, I ended up having to use something that's got a little bit more grit to it, which was this Festool stuff. Now, with, uh, with this repair that we just that we're showing in this demo, the, the surrounding area has now been cured for three weeks. And when I went over it the first time with the Festool and then the 3M Perfected, it didn't cut it. Even at 2000 grit, it did not cut. So it kind of scratched my head a little bit and I kind of came to the conclusion that uh, this, this paint is really, really hard once it's fully cured and it almost needs to be treated uh, more like a gel coat. So just for the heck of it, I, in, in typically when you're working with painting systems, specifically like Allcraft, uh, this, the approach that I'm going to show here is pretty much unheard of, it's taboo, all right, because it'll scratch the crap out of uh, any, it'll scratch the crap out of softer paint. But given that this, uh, that this Alexial is that hard, I actually took some of the compound that I used for actually buffing out gel coat repairs. And the first thing I tried was the Meguiar's, the oxidation remover. And while it worked, it, it, was, it, it worked, but it wasn't, I wasn't exactly happy with it, put it that way. So then I'll, I'm walking around the shop, you know, trying to f uh, remember, or, or trying to find some kind of a compound that I've got that's got a little bit more bite than the Meguiar's, but also breaks down to a super, basically fine polish. And then it, it dawned on me. I remembered last fall, uh, Total Boat had sent me one of their new, one of their buffing compounds. It's, I, th I don't know that they have it uh, marketed so much for paint. It's really marketed towards gel coat repairs, I believe. Um, but I thought, oh yeah, that's right. I remember using that on a project last year and it, I mean, it took out like thousand grit sanding marks in one pass and it left it, ab left the surface absolutely flawless. So I thought, well, what the hell, I'll give it a try. So on a different part of this panel, I did, I did some testing and I used the Meguiar's, I used the Festool, the 3M Perfected, and then finally, on the last patch, I ended up settling on this. And it, it was the, the best by far, the, by far. I mean, it, it took 2,000 grit, one or two, well, actually one application of working the surface, uh, but literally going over the surface once, twice, and it was done, it was perfect. So uh, this, but I have not done that over an actual soft repair area. So this is gonna be a little bit of experiment that I'm gonna be doing here. Um, the other thing that I, I'm doing differently compared to what I showed in the last video uh, with, the, with the, the, the rolling repair is that I'm gonna be using a foam pad rather than, or I'm, I'm sorry, a wool pad rather than a foam pad. Now there again, when you're comparing this, uh, doing a repair with this paint versus all craft, that would be a huge disaster, absolutely disastrous, because it would scratch, it would leave you fine scratches over the entire surface that you'd have to then re-wet sand and polish back out using a foam pad. So, I can't get over, I just, I, I can't get over how hard this paint is when it's fully cured, which is a good thing. You know, again, someone had mentioned or asked the question, you know, how durable is this stuff gonna be? Uh, pretty darn, I mean, if it's, if I've got a, finish this off the way that I would finish a gel coat, that's pretty impressive. So let me, uh, let me flip the camera down, and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna be using the Total Boat, it's their Total Buff. They also make a Total Shine, which I have not had a chance to play with yet, but I'm gonna use the Total Buff and a wool compounding pad to buff out this area. Oh, and the speed on this. I'm gonna be running the speed of the buffer around 1200 RPMs, using medium pressure at first.
impressive. Check this out. All right, well, you know, back up. Obviously, our repair area is over in this corner. Let me see if I can get some reflection in here. But the, uh, the repair was right, right in here somewhere. Right, look at that. Never in a million years would I have ever guessed that an actual compound that has grit, I mean something that's designed more so for gel coat, never in a million years would I have ever guessed that that's what would be needed to polish out this paint. It's a one-step process using that total buff. This is why it's fun to experiment. Even, I don't care how long you've been in the business, there's always new products coming out, new things, and uh, you know, you got to play around with this stuff. If you don't, you fall by the wayside. So anyways, pretty damn impressive. Nice job, Total Boat. <laughs> now, I will have links down below in the description for all the materials that I use in this video, you know, going from the airbrush to the compound, the buffing pad, the buffer, you know, pretty much everything that was uh, shown in this video. Now, I got to say, for I just looked this airbrush up to see what I actually paid for it. It was $27 delivered. And the my other airbrush that died, that was if I remember right, it was over $150 back, you know, 12, 14 years ago. Uh, so I gotta say, for, tw for 27 bucks, I didn't notice a whole hell of a lot of difference. I mean, this thing worked awesome. I mean, a little pancake compressor and an airbrush like this, you can pretty much get professional quality results doing repair work with this paint. It's absolutely incredible. And with that said, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead, so. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you on board. I am a little over a thousand people away from actually breaking 100,000 subs, so mm, wow, wow, I would love to have this done by the end of July. But anyways, if you have any questions, comments, as, please leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching. <laughs> That's impressive. This has been a Boatworks Today production.